Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's going to be time for a new campaign here on the channel. We're playing some Napoleon Total War with Darth Maud. This is Darth Maud version 2.65, the most recent version of Darth Maud, to my knowledge, for Napoleon Total War. And um, I have actually haven't played um, Darth Maud in quite some time. We did a Kingdom of Spain campaign um, probably about a year ago. I don't know. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while since we did that one. And so I just wanted to do another one. Um, as a different country, we're going to be playing, as as you guys can probably tell from the title and the thumbnail, the Ottoman Empire. Let's go jump on into single player. Let's do a Darth Maul campaign. And we're going to play as the Ottoman Empire here. We control a lot of this territory here. We have to conquer a lot of territory. Capture and hold 20 regions, including the regions shown. Romania, Greece, Balkans, Croatia, Austria, Hungary, Sicily, Wallachia, Naples, and Transylvania. We have to be done by late December 1813. Um, campaign difficulty, we're going to leave on hard. Battle difficulty will turn up to um, very hard. Battle time limit. Let's do 60 minutes. Sure. No advisor help. Nothing like that. So start year is 1805. And um, let's talk a little bit about the history of the Ottoman Empire in this time period before we jump on in. As you guys know, the French Revolution set off in 1789. And the French Revolutionary Wars began pretty much... Well, you know, you know they, they, they were officially declared in 1792. The French Revolutionary Wars officially... Um, lasted from about 1792 to 1801 there's a little bit of variation there and so obviously the french revolution took off and war with all of europe pretty much broke out immediately the uk austria and prussia went to war in the war of the first coalition um and were defeated revolutionary france um revolutionary france dominated the the european landscape um at least when it came to battles and such and um uh, a rising star by the name of Napoleon Bonaparte started to uh, to really become qu quite popular in uh, in France, and he eventually invaded Egypt in 1798, and Egypt was a vassal of the Ottoman Empire. And so, eventually, the French would be kicked out in 1801 from from Egypt. But um, really, it was a wake up call to Egypt and the Ottoman Empire that they were falling behind technologically. Um, in comparison to a lot of people in Western Europe, particularly like France and even even, even a country like Russia. Um, in fact, there were a few Russo-Turkish wars um, a little bit before this time period. So we start in the year 1805. Um, there was a, a Russo-Turkish war from 1768 to 1774, right on the eclipse or, or right on the beginning of the um, American Revolution. And uh, the Ottoman Empire lost significant amounts of territory in that war, um, most notably the Crimea. He lost to Crimea in that war. There was another war, Russo-Turkish War of 1787 to 1792, right, right before the French Revolutionary War start. And that was also a defeat for the Ottoman Empire. Not as much, um, no, no enormous secessions of territory. Um, a little bit of Moldavia was lost, a little bit of upper, upper Moldavia here. So not, nothing like crazy, crazy, but um, it was really those wars and the French invasion of Egypt in 1798 that convinced the Ottoman Empire that they were they were technologically backward and they needed to reform and and change their ways. So we start in the year 1805. Um, we're actually at peace. We're not at war with anybody. Um, war is going to be ramping up again, and we'll see what happens. We're going to try and reclaim the glory of the Ottoman Empire uh, in 1805. Let's see what we can do. I haven't played Napoleon's Total War in a while, so you have to forgive me if I'm not the greatest at it. <clears throat> I've done I've done kind of a trial run with um with the Ottomans, but I didn't I didn't really play that that much into it. Um, so you have to forgive me. Okay, so let's take a look. We've got seven thousand gold. We see we control Wallachia, Moldavia, and Bessarabia, uh, the Balkans. Let's see, Athens, Greece, and then Istanbul, Rambelia. Okay, let's take a look. First, we're gonna take a look at our at our trade ships. Let's see, we got some Dow trade ships over here, so let's go ahead and um, split these fleets so we can just get some some more trade posts under our control. Let's see, this is a brig. I don't really want to keep him. I'm actually not sure. Um, occupying a trade post with the trade ship will generate a new trade route. So I heard somewhere, I don't know if this is entirely true. I heard somewhere that regular boats are allowed to occupy trade posts. Is that true? Okay, so that's not true. That's kind of what I thought. So there's a spice one here. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and send a trade ship over there. Let's see. So we have a navy here. A small navy of galleys. 
and a couple bomb catches. Let's go ahead and send these guys. Um, we'll just defend our little. We have a port here in, in Petros. It's a trading port. I'm just going to go ahead and hang out there. Let's make sure nobody's blockading our port. We're trading right now with just the UK, actually, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so let's go and take a look. Before we go into domestic affairs, let's go and take a look at um, <clears throat> international trade. So we're trading with the UK. Um, that's that's fine. So I've noticed that probably we're going to be declared on by the Russians and the Austrians. So I wonder if we can get maybe just like, if maybe we can convince them to not declare war on us by getting a trade agreement with them. So the Russians and the Austrians. Let's try that. Uh, so the Russians actually won't get one. We can maybe try and pay them some money. Um, let's try like 500. Okay, so they did do that. Um, we could trade with France. Probably not a bad idea. France is actually probably quite wealthy. Let's try it. I don't know if he'll give me any money. I doubt it. I don't know. 250. Um, no, so he wants me to give him money. Let's see. Offer payment. Oh, I'll give you like 500. No? It doesn't actually tell me how much money I would make. What about the Kingdom of Spain? Does it tell me how much money I would make? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I'm curious, because I could go for, say, the Kingdom of Prussia. It might not be a bad idea. Okay, so Prussia will accept. France, come on, buddy. Spain, maybe. I could also trade one of these. The, the bigger the country, the, the larger the GDP, pretty much, the bigger the country, the more money you're likely to make from trade. So the thing is, is France and, and the Kingdom of Spain are at war with everybody else. The UK, the Russians, the Kingdom of Sicily, Naples, and Austria. So, like, if I align myself with the Allied powers, say Austria, the Kingdom of Prussia, the Russians, and the UK... Uh, you, you won't take an alliance or anything, right? No, I didn't think so. Um, Prussia... I doubt any of those would take an alliance. You never know, I suppose. Batavia Republic is a trade partner with France, Kingdom of Portugal, Sweden... Portugal is probably not a bad idea. Um, come on, let's try a little more. Let me try like 750 maybe. What does he want? He wants some money. I mean, this is probably worth quite a bit of money. I'm actually willing to give him quite a bit. Well, yeah, I don't know. Let's try. Let's try Spain. Okay, so Spain will accept. It's like, all right, France doesn't want to do it. France doesn't want to do it. What, what can I do? Okay, so we generate 6,200 from trade. That's pretty good. Um, we get, actually, most of our money from the Austrians, trading with the Austrians and the Russians, 1225. Um, the UK, 839, not bad. Okay. Let's take a look here at ministers. Um, let's see, is it something of a banker and a stall holder? Status quo. Okay, so so their treasury guy has no traits at all. We're going to have to change that. Status quo. So we got to replace all these guys. I'm willing to keep him status quo because status quo gets minus one happiness for lower classes, but plus one happiness for nobility. Okay, so we need to get some more candidates. Who's this guy? So he just got the status quo trait. This man wishes to preserve the power of the landed aristocracy. Okay. 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 Um, we're going to need to increase... Uh, definitely the, the size of our trade fleet here. So we can get merchantmen or trade galleys. The Dow, okay. They both, I think they have. Let's see. So obviously the merchantman is just is just better. Let's see. So they're they're a little more. They're actually quite a bit more expensive. I like the merchantmen, but they're quite a bit more expensive to recruit. Um, I think three seventy. Yeah, it's like. It's not exactly two hundred dollars, but I mean, it's the, you know that adds up over time. We're gonna need some more of these guys for these positions, these positions, and then for the spices, we got coffee, coffee, and some more spices over here. They got ivory right there, which is pretty pretty wealthy. Okay, so let's take a look here. We have armies. How many armies do we have? We have three armies. We have one in Iasi. We have one in Istanbul and one in Belgrade. Um, let's see. So this army here, you have a general. We got Spahis, uh, eighteen pounders, uh, grenadiers. See, you've got a czars. 
Zars, Genesary Musketeers, Nine Pounders. We're going to get rid of these guys. These guys are shit for 128. Upkeep? God, it's expensive. So we're going to move you troops up there. So we need a general for this force. Wow. Okay, they're all pretty much cookie cutter. Um, as far as troops, let's see. So what do we need here? So we have 18 pounders. We're moving this force up here to reinforce the 18 pounders and some heavy cavalry, as well as some musketeers. So we actually have a decent amount of cavalry. Could use more. Um, we do need more line infantry. So we have line infantry here. So these are some genesary musketeers. Um, we're not gonna pretty. We're not gonna use any militias for the most part. Um, maybe for public order, but that's about it. Yeah, the Bedouin Warriors or the Provincial Auxiliaries. Provincial Auxiliaries. So these guys are... Um... Interesting, okay. Let's see, Delhi Horsemen are, are light horsemen. They're not bad. They're They're pretty fast. They, they move pretty fast. Delhi infantrymen and cavalry were regular troops and horsemen to find other employment guarding caravans and important dignitaries. Let's see. The elite horsemen of the feudal Sapahis had largely disappeared by the late 18th century. Most of the Ottoman cavalry had been made up of the regular Delhi horse. Interesting. Let's see. Um, so these so the, the main two line infantry units we can recruit right now are either Samat Janissary Musketeers or the Grenadiers. So the thing is, is the Musketeers have more troops, 200. Versus the, the Grenadiers who have 180. But the reloading skill, the accuracy, and the ammunition. Well, the reloading skill and the accuracy are different. So these Musketeers have 25 accuracy. The Grenadiers have 35. I think you can actually... Is there a way to like... I think there's a way to do this. I don't know. I forget. I thought you could compare them. So yeah. So these uh, Genesis Musketeers. They have really worse accuracy. Way worse reloading skill. And then they have way, way worse... Um, melee attack, charge bonus, defense, uh, and morale. Now, the Grenadiers, to be fair, are more expensive. They're 50%... No, no, they're 50 uh, gold more expensive at upkeep. And, like, 120... No, like, 130 in recruitment cost. But I honestly think they're better troops. Let's see. Uh, these Grenadiers are the cream of the Ottoman army, but in comparison to many nations, they find an old-fashioned way. Yeah, I'm just going to stick with those guys for now. Also over here, um, let's see. We have we need we need artillery here. To be fair, I think for now I'll just play kind of safe and just get some grenadiers. <clears throat> and then do we need? Um, we could get Delhi horsemen from from this position to send up north. We need like two more horsemen for for this this position. Let's see. We have this is an Eastern scholar. Let's see, we have a um, assassin. Let's see. I'm guessing that the Austrians will probably declare war on us, so I'm going to send this guy up north to, to like Budapest. Keep an eye over there. Okay. So now... Let's see. Um, Supply post market. So this this area here, and then Belgrade and the Balkans, these are going to be really, really important um, positions for our country. So I'm going to build supply posts there so we can reinforce troops quickly at these positions. Let's see. What's the closest? So we have um, an army encampment here, here in Moldavia, Bessarabia. Bucharest, Wallachia actually has an army encampment and could get a cannon foundry. I'm actually going to go ahead and get it. And then roads. Let's see. Do we want to build roads? Um, I can use a theater here. Yep. I'll get a theater in Istanbul, Romalia. Um, Let's see. Greece could use a market. We could actually. Tax office. I get a theater here and like a market here. 50 region wealth plus 6 per turn. I'll do that. And then that's pretty much it. We can't really get much more. If I had some more money, I would get roads. I would make this a little easier. But I'm out of money. We make 6600 a turn right now. I doubt... I, that's probably going to change though because of, because of what's going to happen to trade. So we'll keep an eye on it. And as far as research, we have two colleges. One in Sofia, Bulgaria, and then one in Adirne. Division of labor. I do like that. Um, conscription increases recruitment slots in your home region by one. National debt. Ooh, that upkeep cost is nice. We're going to take that. National debt. Conscription diamond formation. Fine advance improved coppering. Division of labor land drainage. Let's 
Um, I don't know. Minus two in happiness from the lower class isn't going to help me that much. Division labor is not bad. 3% well. I think this is, it takes a long time to research. I guess we will go for conscription because we're going to need some recruitment slots. So, okay. So, let's see what the Russians and the Austrians and stuff do because they may declare war on me. The Russians did not... Um, okay, so they did accept a trade agreement. So, we'll see what happens there. They allied with the Austrians. Yeah, okay. Kingdom of Sweden. At war with Württemberg. Kingdom of Bavaria. Kingdom of Italy. Kingdom of Spain. French Empire. Batavian Republic. Okay. Let's see what happens. Should expect to be attacked by someone. That's what I thought. Okay, so the Austrians declared war on me. And it looks like the Russians actually joined them. Russians here, you can already see they're, they're, they joined. So that's unfortunate. Okay, treaty agreement camps with the Austrians. The Russians, nation joins your enemies. The Russian Empire. Okay, so I'll ward both those guys. Good to know. Let's take a look at your trade then. Um... I actually can't trade with anybody else. Okay. Well, it looks like these guys have a trade um, trade port that we can raid. So I'll do that. Let's see, coffee. I'll take that one. Let's keep recruiting these trade ships because they're really going to kind of boost our economy a little bit. That was this guy. In case we traded the UK, the Kingdom of Prussia, and the Kingdom of Spain. Cotton, furs, ivory, and spices are definitely pretty wealthy. We should try and get more spices where we can. So, we'll, yeah, okay. So, we should expect attack from the Russians. Send these troops up here. I'm going to get one more Grenadier. We'll get one more Delhi Horseman. We still have these reinforcements on the way. We actually do need to get a general up here now. Um, are they going to attack me? They may. I don't know. They might. Let's see. Just because the Austrians already declared war as well, we're going to need to get troops up here. What do we need right now? We need artillery in this position. I don't mind more grenadiers for now. The grenadiers are pretty good. They'll get us through a lot. But, um... Yeah, we got to be cautious with, uh, let's see, I'll build that, I'll build that, pretty cheap compared to what I get for benefit. Let's see, we have a dockyard here, sloop brig galley, I wouldn't mind some frigates, they're not that great as far as, as far as ships, they're okay. Frig is the largest design of the type and the relatively heavy 18 pounders, carries both, um, uh, balance both firepower and reasonable accuracy. I don't know. I want to focus more on the land army. That's just me. Okay, let's see. What's your traits here? Armchair general? Okay. <laughs> Research points per turn for military technologies. This guy is definitely more to ink than bloodstained, yet can hold force sensibly on military affairs. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, Um. now that we're at war, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to build roads, I think, in all of my settlements. Because I may have to reinforce troops. Let's see. 18 pounders... Okay, so I could start one 18-pounder. I think maybe next turn, I'm going to start some 18-pounders and I'll send them to the west. We only have one over there. We're actually going to have a relatively good amount of artillery over here. You guys get there in two turns. Okay. Yeah, we may actually be attacked here. We'll see. Okay. Still make 6,200. Not bad. I just hope nobody else joins the war, like Prussia or something. Prussia sometimes has a tendency to join the Austrians in wars. Okay, so our first goal, consolidate the uh, the frontier, Bucharest, Moldova. Yeah, ooh, we get a scholar. Nice. Yeah, I like it. I'll take it. Damn, that guy's a really good. Holy shit. Nice. Okay, I'll take it. Report. Okay, so our first goal is just going to be to... Um, I guess the Austrians have some troops over here. No general. Is there Actually, is there a general there? No. No. Okay. <clears throat> So we're gonna, we're just gonna we're probably just gonna defend here in Belgrade for now. We're definitely gonna try and attack um, Little Tottery over here. We're gonna try and take Odessa. Should work out pretty well. Let's see. Let's send this Delhi Horseman up here. Uh, I'll put him in that little army. Ah, really? 
Ah, oh, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Alright, oh, whatever. Um, let's grab ourselves. Where's our general? Okay, so we didn't grab the general yet. I'll grab whoever. I mean, I don't think it really matters all that much. Okay, I'll just grab whoever. Okay, so we have enough cavalry. Now we just need, um, for this force, we really just need to round it off with infantry. That's fine. This force here. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna build, let, let me get, like, three 18-pounders and send them to the west. Um, we have Spahi Cavalry, which are heavy cavalry. I think I will get, I think I will get two more, like, Delhi Horsemen over here. Um... We have a good amount of line inventory for now. They're not going to do forever, but they'll do for now. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, then over here. We're not going to focus over here for now. Let's see, wineries. Actually, it's not bad. Okay, so we got coffee there. Coffee. I don't necessarily need the coffee. I do like the spices. Spices are very wealthy. Obviously, by more quantity, we're going to decrease the world price. So it goes down to 37. Like anything above 30 is pretty good. So we really don't want to invest too much in coffee. Or even at first, 30 is pretty good. So we can we can get world spices um, up to quite a bit. Yeah, I can't trade with anybody for now. Okay. I wouldn't mind upgrading. Um, let's see, this tax office. There is there is a decent amount of wealth here. Five turns for that. What I, what I also want to consider doing is probably I could upgrade this barracks. To get more recruitment capacity here, we'd be able to produce like three troops from here. I think let's do that. Just because just because we have that cannon foundry coming in next turn. And then we'll upgrade these two next turn. What do we make right now? We make about 6,600 a turn. That's going to change with a lot of troops that we're building. But I do want to upgrade. I do want to upgrade Athens, Greece. Um, let's get the magistr uh, magistrate and probably the basic roads. Let's see. Damn it. I forgot to produce a uh, trade ship. It's fine. I'll, I'll skip it for this turn. Yeah. Okay. I'll skip it for this turn. So I, I should definitely expect to be attacked from the west and the east. Um, maybe the Russians more than the Austrians. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I want to focus, I think, on the Russians just because I think they're the stronger enemy in the in the early game. Austrians, not so much, just because he's dealing with Bavaria and the French over there. I mean, we, we can even take a look, actually. I mean, shit, I mean, France just took Bavaria, right? He's, he's right on the Austrian doorstep there, so... Oh, wow. Holy shit, nice. Okay, okay so we have two Delhi Horsemen coming in here. Okay. <clears throat> got quite a bit of money, actually. Damn. Uh, We've got an Austrian force there. I'm not sure where he came from. German Fusiliers. Okay. No, we should be fine to get back in there. That's fine. There's, there's, I don't see anybody around here right now. Oh, that's right. Only have, um, only have three units of cavalry here. Okay, so let's grab one more Delhi horseman. Confident general. Okay, so we can get nine pounders here. Could upgrade this to the ordnance factory, which would give me 18 pounders. That's not a bad idea. Primarily because I only have nine pounders in this army in general. You know what? Let's go and do that. Recruiting troops here. Let's see. I'm actually... I'm going to go ahead and do this. Let me do... It's perfect. That's enough money. We'll get some more trade ships eventually. These guys are finished next turn. We'll send them to the west of Belgrade. We're getting Delhi horsemen. We're getting nothing here for now. Um... Yeah, we need one more Delhi Horseman, then we're going to round out this force. We'll probably replace the 9-pounders with 18-pounders, and then we will round out the force with um, 1, 2, 3. I think we need 4 Grenadiers for that, and then we'll probably march on Odessa pretty soon. Yeah, so to, to win, we have to control um, Transylvania, Hungary, Austria, Croatia, and then Naples and Sicily. So we have a pretty decent, um, pretty decent military force. Let's see. These guys must be building up their armies, I guess. Yeah, the Russians not doing too bad in economics. Okay. Let's uh, let's do one more turn here. Okay. 
Okay. So what do we make right now? Make 5,600. Let's check a look here at Barony. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to replace this guy. We're going to put this guy with the Barony. I'm going to put him in charge of the Army Administration. It's one of the most important cabinet positions. Trade. We could use... I, I wish we could have more trade partners. It would be nice to have. Okay. So let's send these men this way. Damn, it's going to take a while. Okay, so we round out this force. We have one, two, three. We've got the 18 pounders. Yep, just think more grenadiers from there. Small Russian force here. It's fucking auto resolve, dude. It's some bullshit. It's kind of annoying that I lose so many troops in just simple auto resolves. Napoleon is kind of bad at that. So we may have to start fighting battles manually, which is kind of annoying. Um, let's see. Uh, so spices. Let's see. What's the world supply of spices? Damn, definitely that ivory, dude. If I could take that. I don't know who owns that, but holy shit, that'd be really useful. We have tea and ivory out here, but I don't have the navy to defend troops out here. Then again, we're only at war with the Austrians and the Russians. But I would definitely need some sort of stronger navy. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. That's my phone. So I, I want to get this dry dock to start getting um, ships to the line as well as a new commercial port. That would really help me out. Let's see. So we're upgrading the, the army encampments everywhere. Okay. We got the roads on the way. Um, I don't mind the school of poetry. I think I'm trying to think. Do I need? So we're recruiting a lot of troops at the moment. So I can get one more Grenadier here, and then I can actually grab one more Grenadier. I can grab two more. Either that or I begin construction. No, no, we don't have the Ordnance Factory yet. So yeah, I'm actually going to grab the two Grenadiers from here. We'll send them to the east. This force is going to have to play defensively for a while. I wouldn't mind upgrading supply warehouses just because, you know, it, it, just in case we go to war here. Are we, are we getting some battles that we need to replenish troops from? I mean, having having the supply warehouse would really kind of help me out. How long does it take, though? It takes six turns, which that's 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 some time. School poetry would help us out here. School poetry. I wouldn't mind getting the school poetry here as well, because Greece is, will be can be relatively wealthy. Dow trade ship. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm considering going for like the probably the furthest I could go would be for this this tier this ivory. Cameroon down. Yeah, Calcutta. I mean that would make, that would get us. Some, there's only I think two ivory nodes. One of them is unoccupied. You know what? I'll go ahead and do it. Let me let me do. If nobody's there, then I'm gonna go ahead and do it. We're gonna recruit one of these guys. I'm willing to trade spices for ivory. That's coffee. It's not so important. Um, that's a French Empire fleet in the coffee there. We gotta be careful with him. Yeah, we gotta be cautious about that. So, um, if you see here, our leader, it says Salim the First. This is actually incorrect. Darth Maul gets this wrong. Salim the First was actually not king during this time. It's actually Salim the Third, and apparently he's fertile. But he doesn't have good management, apparently. So we have an absolute monarchy. We're Islam as a dominant culture. We have a little bit of money. We have a population of 6 million, which is actually quite small for this time period. Um, prosperity rich, and then prestige rank sublime. Yeah, that ivory would really help us out. Okay, so we're training up troops in a lot of different places, mostly grenadiers. They're actually um, quite quite cost effective, I have to admit, for, for, for how good of troops they are. It's funny, actually. I, I just realized this. I don't think Grenadiers have bayonets, so they cannot withstand cavalry. Um, the thing is, is, if we have really strong artillery, then we don't need the cavalry anyway. We'll be fine. And then 9-pounders. So the difference between 9-pounders... Um, there's actually not a huge difference between 9-pounders and 18-pounders, but there's two things in Napoleon Total War that are really strong. Accuracy and range. If you have... Or, or not even accuracy, um, sorry, artillery. Artillery are extremely strong in Napoleon Total War. Like, seriously, like, if you just have a straight army of artillery, you can beat other armies just by sitting and just having them fire. 
Um, so the so the nine pounders are good. They're actually more accurate than the than the eighteen pounders. The thing is, is range. Eighteen pounders have more range, and when they hit, they have more firepower. Accuracy is lost though. Um, they actually they have even lower morale, which is kind of interesting. So um, that's why you want eighteen pounders because of range. Is you can just outrange everyone, which is a significant advantage. Okay, what am I doing? Uh, I'm gonna go. In, I'm gonna get this. Um, anything else that I can do? Let's see. I could actually start training one eighteen pounder because I do want to replace. I want to replace these guys, but or the the nine pounders. But we'll see. Because honestly, they don't even cost that much. As far as like difference, let's see. What's the upkeep cost? I mean, it's a negligible upkeep cost. It's like what twenty gold per turn. The recruitment cost is different, but um, the upkeep cost, like just having better, more deadly artillery for like 20, 20 gold more per turn, is, is seriously useful. <clears throat> okay. So yeah. So we'll focus here. These troops will go up north next turn, and then we have some Grenadiers on the way. We might actually be able to move out right after that. We'll see. I'm curious what he has over here. In fact, I, well, I do want to keep an eye on the Austrians. Let me see. What do you guys have? Okay, so he's got a full garrison in Vienna. He's got Grenzers, Fusiliers, Chevaliers, Hungarian Hussars, Six Pounders, Grenadiers, um, Landeschützen. He's got another army over here. This is uh, Johann von Ausreich. Javaligers. Let's see. He's got Jaegers. Swiss Lees, Grenzers. Swiss Line Infantry. Uh, Lanza Schützen. And then Swiss Grenadiers. Okay. So pretty good fucking troops. I think with our artillery advantage and um, good tactics, we'll be fine. We're not really... The, even though, yes, the Ottoman Empire, you could say, is is not technologically modern... We're actually not that far off from being comparable to the to the uh, Western powers. I'm curious, actually. Let, I don't know if I can check it out by our by our tree drill school. So the drill school would get us hand mortars, provincial spahis, Circassian mounted swordsmen, Baelic Janissary musketeers, Smut Janissaries, Albanian warband. What does the military academy get us? I don't know if it gets us any new troops. I think it just gets us upgraded troops. Nazimi Sadit infantry, the new model. So Nitsam at Sadit are the new model infantry. This has a bayonets. I don't know. It was the first Western as infantry in the Omni Empire. Do we have any of those troops? Not that I see. So we don't have any like modernized troops. Nobody with pikes or with the bayonets. Okay, but eventually we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, guys, I'm going to take a quick break here. I hope you guys are excited for this campaign. I'm excited. Um, I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know if you guys are enjoying this, and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much.